Hi right, guys, welcome back to the woods. This is Charles Survival. I'm going to show you how to make wild coffee or cleaver's coffee. So, uh, hi guys, uh, welcome back. And really, um, just to say, this is one of many wild coffees, as in I'm not just, it's just a general term, wild coffee. I mean, there's plenty of them. You can make it out of dandelion and loads of other stuff, but this is just a general one, and it's probably one of the most common forms to make coffee. So, uh, here, got the plant by me. Um, it's called. It's got many names, really. Goosegrass, sticky weed, um, and it gets its name, of course, goosegrass, because it grows by um, well rivers and that sort of thing. Goose is used to make nests. Um, but I think there's another plant called goosegrass, so I'll have to check up on that. But they're mainly uh, called cleavers or sticky weed. And the reason it's called that, when you break it off, this is usually this is an old plant sticks to you like so but what we're really after today I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that there we go there's one on the outside I just poked it away but it's the little balls on the end so this here this is what we're after this is the seed of the plant I think as in it seems to be the seed but um, the little ball green balls uh, <laughs> but um, yeah this is what we're gonna be using to make the coffee so first I'm going to show you really how to identify the plant. So to identify sticky weed, it mainly grows in uh, hedgerows or um, groups of bushes um, and also just in general grasslands really. Um, it's a very common plant. I think you get it in pretty much all areas of the UK um, as well as uh, I think you can get it in the US and other places but mainland Europe as well. But here it is, it's, in, it's very distinctive in its look as in it's like long shoots and it grows and it's got these like thin leaves but the main things you're going to be looking for are these little balls and the fact it's sticky as you can see there both my hands are here and it's stuck quite firmly but the green balls as in to identify them they are literally little green balls and uh, there's not really much else to say as in it's quite an easy plant to identify especially if you're starting out with foraging and as well this this recipe of coffee is relatively simple and it requires minimal gears and it doesn't really require a knife or anything like that as in really it requires a campfire and a good good cooking pot with a lid really but uh and quite a lot of patience because collecting loads of these little balls takes quite a while but it's certainly worth it especially if you have a camp established with uh, a lot of people doing other tasks So what we have here is quite a substantial amount, as you can see. Well, this is probably about enough for one and a half because you can see how it's about what 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 the general look is and like how much it takes. This is probably about the size. That's my hand. I've got quite big hands. That's probably the size of a small dog bowl. But I've just filled it enough, so it's starting to edge up a bit. As in, really, this amount probably you could probably have it between two people quite comfortably. But um, it depends how really how strong you want the coffee, as in I, I like coffee quite strong, so I'm probably going to collect a little more off camera. And then uh, I'll show you how you're going to process it. Right, so to um, actually produce the coffee, what you need to do is you sort of need to bake the actual uh, cleaver seeds, or goose grass seeds, whatever you want to call them. Um, you need to, well, the green balls, you need to um, bake them really. So it's a small cooking pot like this, as in you don't need this, you can just use it in a normal cooking pot. As in, it's, I've just used this because it's built into a zebra billy can. Would fairly re thoroughly recommend it, as it's brilliant and it's just perfect size as well, because it fits into the top. So uh, what you need to do now to bake, of course, is to light yourself a fire or put it on a gas stove or something. A lot of people like to use gas stoves, I've got one, as in they are really good fun to use because you just get a cup of water boiled in well seconds so uh, but we have to make a natural fire today I'm just using vines to get that quick heat established
What I like to do when I'm fire lighting as well is just literally pile on the stuff as much as possible at the start. As I really haven't really got enough stuff on the early stage now. But uh, because they're vines, they're really soft. They should light quite well. And start to pile on the bigger stuff. It's the smaller stuff should catch. And there we go, we're off now. So the aim here is just to get a really nice bed of coals, so we can just bake them. You can see I've got all my wood prepared, so should be fine now. Start putting some bigger stuff on. So really all we've got to do now is just wait for the bed of coals to form. I mean, that's not going to take too much time as we've got plenty of wood on the fire. And as well, the, the small vines, they're really thin, so they'll produce coals really quickly. But um, producing the coals just establishes a good heat base. and will allow the fire to make coals a lot quicker. So if you can use the little vines as in this on my how to make the best way to start a fire, as I do show them, but um, yeah, check that video out if you want. But uh, yeah, it's a good way to light a fire. As in, I'm doing. As in, I do prefer a natural fire. It does feel a lot more warm and toasty. It makes your camp seem a lot better. And the fact it keeps you warm. And it, well, it's just a natural. Uh, it makes you feel naturally safe in uh, the woods. But yeah, all right. I'll tell you when it's back on the coals. So I'm going to be adding some large logs on because really I want to cook on this after. I've got to keep myself. Uh, some lunch, have some noodles. But I tell you what, there's new southern fried chicken noodles, as in they're looking pretty nice. Gonna try them out today. But I'll show that to you in my camp video. So the fire's died down a bit. What I've got really good bed of coals and uh that bit by there, it's my foam pad, it's possibly the best thing I've got in my rucksack at the moment. <laughs> Makes just going to the woods better, but if you look here, oh, useful stick. Just moving this along, got loads of nice coals in there. But to get them going again. And it's just really useful. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make this accessible, so I'm gonna build a platform of green twigs over yeah this actual area by here so here's some green sticks i don't know what plant this is um well not plant well i don't think it's a tree it's like a shrub but what we're going to do is just place the green sticks it is really hot and this will just stop the tin from falling in completely so just wedge them in you should be able to here's our thing so you're going to be able to hear these pop like popcorn hopefully if we're successful. It is really hot by there, so should do. As in it might take a while. But it's the baking tin. So the green leaves just making like a bit of a makeshift grill. And if you can hear that, stopped a little just then as I spoke. You can hear a little popping. You know, browning a bit. I don't think they're going to pop yet. They should pop in a bit sec. 
Right, so we'll just check on them. Oh, this takes a bit of crap, really, but mm -hmm. let's have a look. It's starting to get there. And of course, the pot lid doesn't shut properly. Ah, fuck. <laughs> oh. And the stick's got in there. Ah. There we go. Ah. Done. So here we are with what we have out of the fire. I've just dropped my stick. There it is. The lid never comes off quite easily. There we go. Come on. There we go. So fully baked. So what you're going to want to do now is pan them. <laughs> um, but you're going to so that most of them. That was actually a bit of char. I don't think they're trying, but they're fully baked now. So what we're going to do is we're going to pan them up into a coffee. So what I'm going to use to pan them up is my canteen. It's just a large one litre bottle. I'm really just going to want to pan them into like a powder. So this almost looks like instant coffee. As you know, they're quite crunchy. And they should be about a brownie, almost black colour. So here we are with the finished product. It does just look like mashed up charcoal at the moment, but really we're just going to put this into a coffee. It's, it's very fine, it's a lot less, it seems a lot less like charcoal. It's baked and just grounded. But as you can see, we've got a decent amount there. And that's going to go into our cup, which is actually just a full billy can. As in, um, we really didn't plan, I didn't really plan to make this today. It just came up, I saw the cleavers, I was ah, make some coffee. So, I'm going to show you, bring it up. So you're going to add really just a little bit of water. What you're going to do... Add as much really as you want, how strong you want it really. So, powder going in. Really, I'm going to do this as an honest sort of review. <laughs> review, I guess, yeah. I guess what's what you term it. As to what it's actually like. So a lot of people are like, hmm, pine needle tea. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan, as in it's nice, but I won't rave about it too much. It's nice occasionally, but it doesn't look very appetising at the moment. Usually boil the water first, but I prefer to add it, then boil it. So what I'm going to do with that. Stick in the fire for a bit. So really you just want the water to go to a sizzle or a light boil and then uh, you should be good for drinking. But really you should be pouring this out into a different container, we'll probably pour it into the little bowl. Because um, really it'll just take years to drink, it'll probably cool down by then. So, well, I'll show you the taste test. It does just look like black water really. It's starting to look a little more appetising. Oh, the lid's really hot. So here we are to the first batch. It's a little hot now. <laughs> so let's have a try, see what this is like. So it's got a really nice cover. What well, cover? Colour. As in. And at the bottom looks quite weak but we'll give it a stir as in really I think you meant to cafetiere this I know it's a long word for me but <laughs> I mean it's the best way of brewing coffee as in this will have little bits in it excuse my strap uh, yeah we'll give it a try now um, so really the actual aim of this video is just a, it's just a bit of a taste test Taste test and a really in a bit of a almost a review, almost of uh, goosegrass coffee or cleavers coffee, whatever you really want to call it. I mean, it doesn't look the most appetising of drinks, as in it, it does look like black coffee. Um, it's just a little. It's when it's when you don't use a cafetiere, you just put the things in, you don't mind having the bits in. 
because I know a lot of people don't do that but if you're if you're outside and you just have that that's really what you've got to have um, and really if it's a good alternative or I would prefer it over normal coffee like out in the woods so here we go this could either be amazing or absolutely foul so I see what they mean it, it it's quite weak it's not particularly strong I think I need a lot more the actual thing in but you can taste the coffee in it and cleavers is meant to be goose grass but I mean it's quite yeah it's quite a it tastes quite organic quite almost soily in a way I mean it doesn't sound most appetizing but it is it is nice as in I wouldn't I would I prefer it with normal coffee um normal black coffee it depends really on the type as in it can be really quite grim but I, would, I think I would drink this, because it is quite easy to get out in the woods, but it depends how much time I have, I mean. And if I have normal coffee on me, I mean, normal coffee on you is just, it's a lot quicker to do. But, for an alternative, I would, I would drink this. I wouldn't, I'm not, I'm quite picky when it comes to outdoors drinks, as in pine needle tea, it's nice, as I'll drink it. Like birch twig tea, I've had that as well, as in they're, they're relatively nice, but... I wouldn't choose to drink them over their normal, a normal black tea, if you if you may. But I would, I would seriously contemplate drinking this on a regular basis out in the woods. I mean, not having normal coffee, that's that's quite, and well, I don't know. It's sort of normal coffee. If I didn't have it, I would have this. If I did have normal coffee, I think I'd probably go for the normal coffee, just because it's I'm more used to it. I mean, this after a while. I mean, if you were surviving out in the wilderness or living out in the woods for a bit or just generally <laughs> didn't have your coffee as I've repeated 26 times or something so um, yeah I would drink this if you're out and you don't have a coffee alternative I would thoroughly recommend it I mean it's definitely it's a good cup it's a good cup of tea nice one all right so if you enjoyed this video and you want to see a sort of series on wild teas and wild brews um, leave a like, comment on the other stuff you'd like to see. If you're just a beginner, I mean, just <laughs> mention something, I don't know, and what you enjoy. Right, thanks for watching. I'm literally about to run out of memory. Uh, subscribe, and uh, see you later.